The Long Island Lacrosse Showcase has been the premier recruiting event in the nation for over a decade. Led by high school coaches in Nassau and Suffolk counties, our event annually draws the biggest and best college coaches. Past participants and MVPs have been Joey Spelina, Mac O'Keefe, and Xavier Arline. Registration is now open for this must-attend summer event. Register now at lilacshowcase.com and follow us on Instagram at lilacshowcase. And coming this fall, for the first time, our Girls Showcase. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island. Stadium in Mineola, New York. The Varsity Media Sports Network presents the 14th annual Reeves Rock Lacrosse Day for Heroes in honor of Sergeant James J. Regan, where this afternoon the Indians of Manhasset come to Mineola to take on the Flyers of Chaminade. Today's Reeves Rock Showdown is presented by Catholic Health as well as the Faceoff. Academy. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Dylan Butler, John Geegan here with you in Mineola. And, and John, this is one of those special days. Uh, it doesn't, it sometimes doesn't even matter how these teams are playing uh, because you're playing for something more than the sport of lacrosse. As we mentioned at the very top, you're playing in honor of Sergeant James J. Regan. If you don't know uh, Jimmy Regan's story, he was a Manhasset resident who played at Chaminade, wore their number 19, went on and played at Duke. When 9-11 happened and the attack on our uh, World Trade Center, he was called into duty and he uh, changed his entire life and he went on and joined the Army Rangers and ultimately gave his life uh, to, uh, for our country. Uh, so uh, pretty much every year now, this is the 14th year, uh, we remember Jimmy and we honor him uh, with this great game. Yeah, it's an exciting match. Uh, obviously, right now, it's special because you have two of the best teams in the country facing off for this great occasion. And uh, it's a, these, are, these schools, because it's a private school and a public school, it, their towns are close by to each other. So you have some players from both towns, just like Jimmy Regan did. Uh, they're from Manhasset on the Chaminade team, so they know each other. They're familiar, which makes it even more of an interesting matchup today. And we mentioned before, this is a, a game that it's the 14th year, uh, and these teams uh, have... It's been more Chaminade of late uh, when you look at sort of the all-time meetings. Um, but this one could be interesting as well just because the way Manhasset is playing. Uh, Chaminade coming off a loss. There you see it. All-time Chaminade with an 8-5 lead. That includes a 17-8 win at Manhasset last year. And there you see it all overall. 2008 was the first ever meeting and Chaminade winning. What I like too is you go from having it at Chaminade, you have it at Manhasset. Uh, so... You know, that's, that was who Jimmy was, right? A, a, a Manhasset guy who went on and obviously came here and played and uh, did his thing. Duke honors him as well, and uh, it's, it's a terrific uh, day for that. But as for these two teams, you mentioned it, right? Manhasset coming in, perfect, 14-0. and They are number five in the country by USA Lacrosse Magazine. That is the highest-ranked public school in the country, and they have just gone and uh, done it almost it's like a carbon copy each game right you win 85 percent of your face-offs with cal gerard you've got really good goaltending from matt m you've got a balanced attack and then you've got some tenacious defenders as well and that includes those short poles and lapina 
um, as well as Flood uh, just getting after it um, and winning a lot of ground balls and getting some calls turnovers as well. For sure, Manhasset is an incredibly balanced team, uh, and it's a small school too. It, it really speaks to the, the quality of what their youth league program is all about, and all, not to mention they have an incredible coaching staff with Coach Cromwell. You know, I know him from back in the, in the Lizards days, where he's just you know, Matty M's got a, a, a nice privilege of having someone that can really shoot the ball as uh, Coach Cromwell can, and then you have guys like Steve McTeague and Coach Fallon coaching the goalies. It's an excellent staff, really well rounded. Rounded has a lot of expertise, and that, that's why they're in the position they are today. John, let's take a look at the players to watch now for Manhasset. And on the attack, it's Liam Connor. He does it on the basketball court, and he does it here as well. Around the cage, attacks it like he's going to the rim. 31-27 and 27 on the year for the Colgate-bound senior. And on the other side, part of that three jacks defense, it's Jack Mulholland going to Dartmouth. And you see his numbers as well, a goal and an assist, which means that he gets up and gets involved in the attack. 18 ground balls and six caused turnovers, really getting it done for the Indians. Yeah, when you see you see Liam Connor, I think when he, with, when Manhasset's offense is rolling, he's involved, he's everywhere, he's all over the field, and that's gonna be a key for them today. And then Jack Mulholland, uh, love him because he's not just athletic and fast, but he can also be physical. You know, you gotta get off the tracks when the train's coming through and he's coming across that crease. So he can do it all as a defenseman, and uh, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see who, who he matches up with today. Chaminade, they come in here this afternoon at number 11 in the country by USA Lacrosse Magazine, and they are 9-4, coming off a second loss to their rival St. Anthony's, and that was a game that, uh, because they St. Anthony's won both of the matchups, including a two-goal win here at Gold Star Stadium to open the season, the Friars won the Catholic Championship, so it's a Strange situation this year because generally that's the last game of the year for the Flyers, but now it's Riggs Rock. Not that we expect any let off because this game has, as we mentioned at the very top, so much to do with it. And uh, it's special for anybody who wears that number 19. And uh, he is one of our players to watch here today as we show you the Flyers players. It's Gavin Creo having that honor this year of wearing Jimmy's number 19. The Richmond commit 33 and 22 on the season. And on the other side, a guy going to Carolina, Benjamin Fox, part of a really good defensive unit as well. Every one of those guys, a D1 commit. Yeah, there's so many different guys you go down the line on the Chaminade roster and love to be a player to watch. And, you know, like you mentioned, they just dropped a tough one to St. Anthony. So I always talk about this is the end of the season. This is a one-game season, a one-game championship. And it's going to be interesting to see how they bounce back because St. Anthony is a real tough opponent. They really exposed Chaminade's defense in a lot of different ways in that game. So to see how they kind of bounce back and take this one on, and this is a big game. This is, their, this is essentially their championship too. So going to be a great matchup. You see there, Creo. Uh, getting ready and getting warmed up. The Richmond commit. Hey, the Spiders coming off a uh, an A-10 championship, right? In the dance as well. So uh, you know that Gavin is probably pretty excited about that. Getting some last-minute instructions as well. As we get ready for the start of this one. Let's take a look at the starters here. This afternoon, first for the visitors from Manhasset. And it's an unchanged one. And again, hey, you're 14 0. Why are you going to change anything, right? So you've got on the attack Connor Haggerty and Danny Colin. Colin just a sophomore, but 20 goals on the season. Your first midfield unit of Jack Peterson, Matt Cargiulo, and Mike Mondiello. And we mentioned before, not many hands beat three jacks, right? And you've got LaMarca, Mulholland, and Morrison as your close defense for Manhasset. And not in this graphic, but certainly we need to mention them, are the, are the D-Middies and James Lapina and P.J. Flood. Spectacular duo there and really good LSMs as well. And Rowan Collins and Kip Zachariah in the cage for Manhasset. A guy, John, that you know well, Matty M., the junior has really come into his own this year. Was a guy who split time a year ago was getting used to varsity lacrosse, but has made a huge leap in his junior year. You see it there: 82 saves on the year, a 62 percent save percentage. He also has four four caused turnovers, so he gets his stick out there in passing lanes and interrupts things as well. So M uh, will be a big factor here this afternoon for Manhasset. And, of course, the Indians, as you mentioned, head coach Keith Cromwell, seventh season 
1997 graduate of Hicksville, where he won a national championship as a senior, went on and played at Rutgers, the all-time leader on the banks of the Raritan with goals and uh, points as well, a three-time All-American. Let's take a look at the Chaminade starters now, and similarly, not really changes on this side of things. Creo, Landolfi, and Riley are your attack line. That's Richmond, Navy, and Amherst. Your first midfield of Correa, Flaherty, and Lau. Well, that's Stony Brook, Navy, and Navy. And then on your defense, we mentioned before, it's Ben Fox going to Carolina, Ben Cacavo going to BU, and Brendan O'Brien going to Lafayette. For head coach Jack Moran, 44th season at the helm this year. Join the 600 Career Win Club, a very exclusive club to join. And in the cage for Chaminade, as he has been all season, a really good one. There you see him, P.J. Verdi, the senior bound for Hopkins. When he gets his third save today, that's 100 on the season. Always a good mark for a goalie, especially when you play the competition that Shamana does, and Verdi, one of the best on the island. Yeah, P.J.'s uh, just an absolute solid goalie, and uh, you know he's a great leader. He does all the little things right. And uh, it's, it's tough for him sometimes, you know, uh, against a team like St. Anthony's. He really didn't have a chance to be an impact player, I feel, because St. Anthony's really, as I said, exposed some of that man-to-man -man Chaminade defense, which they're not used to seeing all season. So we'll see how he bounces back today, and hopefully we have a great match. Just a quick programming note for you, maybe more for us. Pat Flaherty, usually wearing 26. He's wearing 16 in the first half. I think he forgot something at home. So uh, he'll wear a 16. He'll get back to his usual. 26 uh, in the second half. A special day, as we mentioned, in honor of the late Sergeant James Regan. And we're going to have uh, a pre-game presentation, some words from his dad, Mr. Regan, as well as the anthem as well, coming up here on a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Mineola, a terrific day for lacrosse. And as you mentioned at the very top, a day that means a little bit more to these two programs and the Manhasset community, certainly, because of the late, great James J. Regan. Let's head to the microphone now. It gives me my it gives great pleasure to introduce Jim Regan, the chair and CEO of the Rangers lead the way fun. Hello everyone. Thank you. It's a, a wonderful day. Sorry about the uh, mic situation. Can't be that one. I mean, uh, stay. time, ladies and gentlemen, I would ask that you please rise. Gentlemen, remove their caps and join me in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleam. Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming 
Unfortunately, some technical difficulties when Mr. Regan was set to speak, but uh, you know how much this means to him and his family, and to have his son remembered year in and year out, uh, it doesn't doesn't get better than that. No, it's a special tradition that I think, uh, as we've talked about early in different parts of the season, that the lacrosse community does a great job coming together for important causes, and this isn't no, any exception. So, you know, special time. The, the stands are packed here. Everyone knows what it's here for. There's great fundraising at the gate. So it's a special day, special tradition. Down at the table, at the scorer's table between the two benches is Riggs Rock, and that will be presented. We'll have that for you after the game as well. Uh, it'll be uh, presented, obviously, to the, to the winning team. Let's take a look at the keys uh, for both of these teams coming in. And we start with Chaminade. Winning the faceoff battle is super important, obviously. You want to play great team defense and goaltending, and you want to play fast. And what I like about this game, I think both teams kind of want to play fast as well. Manhasset, it's about winning the clearing game and those ground ball battles. You want to limit the touches and contain number 19, Gavin Creo. And then on, additionally, you want to attack the short sticks, take advantage of great offense deeper into possession. So don't force it if it's not there, bring it out. Let's have a longer possession, and then maybe find something deep in a possession. Uh, to get a goal. Yeah, I think I'd even add, I think this game is going to be won and lost on the Chaminade defensive side of the ball and Manhasset's offensive side. You know, we've seen that Chaminade can explode for goals very easily and Manhasset can play some defense. But on the other side of it, Chaminade had some trouble against St. Anthony's playing that man-to-man -man defense and giving their goalie a chance to make saves. And we've seen Manhasset come out a little slow to start some of these games and wake up their offense. So I think that's going to be the key, especially at the beginning of this one. For over a decade, the Faceoff Academy has trained the best faceoff men of all ages, from youth players learning the basics to college All-Americans and professional All-Stars. Come train with former New York Blizzard Greg Gorenlian, Major League Lacrosse's all-time faceoff wins leader and USA gold medalist every Thursday and Deer Park. Check out thefaceoffacademy.com to take your game to the highest level. At the Faceoff X, Quinn Ball to your left, just a sophomore, 70% on the season, and Cal Girard. The best that there is on the island at his craft. 85% of his face-off wins this year. Yeah, he was just unbelievable when we watched him in the Woodstick Classic. And Face-Off Academy, Greg Renly and Jerry Raganese, those guys, they have their fingerprints all over some of the best face-off guys on Long Island. They have revolutionized the position. Gerard wins it back to himself, and Manhasset on attack here to start this game off. This is the 14th annual. Riggs, Rocky, and the only thing that really stopped these two teams from playing was COVID. So you had a break from 19 until last year. Yeah, you feel bad for those seniors that lost those opportunities to play in those big games because Riggs, Rock is one of those that the youth league, you know, they're here in force and they look, look to grow up and get their shot at Riggs, Rock when they're seniors. I know coming in here today, I saw a lot of young kids with the sticks and uh, that's what it's all about. There's no question about it. Aiden Haggerty hands off. And up top's the sophomore, Danny Colon. There's Cargiulo. What a year Mike uh, Matt Cargiulo has had. The UMass commit. 28 goals, 7 assists. But what I like more, 10 ground balls and 5 cause turnovers. So when they ride, it's generally Cargiulo leading that way. There's Peterson now trying to find his way through and and this is, again, what Cromwell mentioned, right? Patience on the attack. Trying to split the fender. It's going down, and it's a turnover. That's getting a ground ball was Jack Tully. During the football season, Tully does just that. Runs up the field as a running back. And this time, he will get Chaminade going on the attack. Yeah, huge ground ball for Tully to get the, the defense going. Uh, every youth league loves that nose to the ground Hoover vacuum type scoop up uh, 
a ground ball. That's how they're coached when they're young. So uh, big, big start there for Chaminade, uh, and we're off the other way. Landolfi hands off number nine among a, a whole host of guys going to Navy. And he loses it up top. Affecting it was 29, Jack Mulholland. And then, was that an over and back? Or they call a foul? I think we got a foul, right? We do. Looks it'll like a push a 30 for second. Yeah, it'll be a 30 second hold. Let's see it again. Yeah, you see here, ball comes out, scooped it up. You know, Chaminade's hawking him, trying to get keep the ball there end. He's got it in his stick, so there's your push. Yeah, I think that was more push than hold, certainly. But regardless, it is Manhasset man up for the next 30 seconds. Manhasset's had a strong man up this year. I think it's a, a strength of, of their offense. They really do a good job squeezing the field and getting those great opportunities. And there's Connor skips it. Connor, some room now off that cut. Good job by Peterson, right? Initially cutting through, which created some shooting space for Connor. Yeah, you see right away in the first possession, Shamanad extended the field. Now on man down, they're really packed in. Manhattan's got some great shooters, so in my book, Shamanad needs to extend that field a bit. And we're even, so Shamanad gets the job done, but Manhattan maintains possession. And here is Connor. Connor swims, gets topside, saved by Verdi. Good first save by Verdi. Ground ball, ends up in his stick. It was Mack getting a piece. So good first save by Verdi, going to Hopkins. And what a year Hopkins has had, a resurgent year. And you know Verdi's real excited about that as he's on his way. But big save, he, he gets down low, stays back, doesn't come too far off his pipe. But again, we, we mentioned this, Chaminade needs to slide earlier to help their goalie make some more saves. Correa spins away from the slide, and his shot was saved by him. Ground ball picked up, though, by Chaminade. Jump shot and a goal! Gavin Creo, number 19. How fitting. Puts the Flyers up 1-0. Yeah, off the turf. Today's going to be a ground ball war, and, uh, you know, Chaminade fights for this one and, and really does make Manhasset pay. See the initial save, and then, uh, you know, Mat Matty M does a great job, knocks it away. Chaminade's right there. And this is just a simple, you know, no one's pressuring him, stopping their feet on defense. So he gets topside, fires it, and buries it off stick high. Gavin Creo. You kind of like when the number 19 scores the first goal, right? So Creo, his 34th goal of the year. And he gives Chaminade the lead, a hold against Girard. So give the win to Ball, and it's possession Chaminade. Yeah, last year Chaminade did a decent job against Cal Girard. Uh, keeping it pretty close and, you know, looking at basically 50-50 right now. That, that's a great place, a stat for Chaminade to be in if you could keep Cal at 50%. That was outside that opening faceoff that Gerard took to the house. Six seconds in, you get a Fogel goal and Riggs Rock. Yeah, I, I do have to say, you can't draw it up any better than 19. You know, the number 19 jersey making the first goal to start it off. And there he is, Creo. Kicks it up top. There's Jude Lynch looking to get downhill. Back to X. This time at X was Riley who spins. Back to Lynch. A little stutter step. Back up top. Luke Moran. Hands off. There's Bradley Wyckoff, number 20. Ball on the carpet. Look out. M picks it up. Is there a crease violation? Got to say right there, number 44, James Lapina. That was just such a huge heads-up play off the wing. They had a time and room opportunity. He left his man to make contact and stop a free uh, time and room shot. So the Flyers maintain possession. Here's Moran, part of the second midfield unit for Chaminade. Gets it right back, fires high. 
I'm not sure if M got a piece, but it goes over. Yeah, tough to say. Uh, but quick little two-man two game there. Great job. And that's what Shamana does very well. They mix it up and just pull on the switch. You hit that guy who's open and get a quick shot off. Here's Creo. Goes the other side. Spinning there, Riley. Trying to cut it inside. Nothing there. So you push it back up top. Here comes big Bradley Wyckoff. Taken away, though. Another special number guy, 44 for Manhasset, James Lapina. Lapina may have a short stick in his hand, but he plays like he's got the long pole. Just a beast. And in fact, Cromwell has said he is so comfortable with Lapina, he sometimes gets the top guy. Look at this cut to the cage. A sidearm shot, and we are tied. Matt Cargiulo. This is one of those things that I've seen over the season that Chaminade's, uh, you know, their off-ball defense, sometimes just a little bit slow to realize and, get, and give some help. So kind of settled, unsettled, getting personnel on. You know, we get one little backdoor cut, and that's all it is to create a mini transition situation. I couldn't tell there, but I was, was Cargiulo coming out of the box there and maybe just got lost because you could see the hesitation there for a moment by Peterson waiting. And then Cardula, which is this crisp cut to the cage as Gerard wins the faceoff. Yeah, that, that's well coached. You know, you play that substitution box game and good teams can create opportunities off that. So they, you know, had Shamanon's defense thinking they were waiting to get that personnel on the field and all of a sudden backdoor cut, they're going. Gerard harassed and now it's another ground ball war. Bodies fly and a timeout is called by Manhasset. The fact that that timeout comes with 548 <laughs> left in the first quarter tells you all you need to know about how these teams are battling today. Well, Manhasset's a team that uh, is on a little bit of a revenge tour this year. Yes, they won the state championship last year, but a lot of those big time games that you play, like to Darien, and to Cold Spring Harbor. Well, they lost those last year, and he's still revenge tour 11 2 against Darien. 15 3 to Cold Spring Harbor. The overtime loss at home, they avenge that. And this is the last stop of the revenge tour against Chaminade, and the Flyers won last year's contest 17 to 8. We have those highlights for you as well. We mentioned Gerard, the Fogo goal. Well, let's relive it again. We'll go back to Ed Walsh Field, and there you go. Six seconds in, Gerard gives the Indians the lead, but then Christian Alakwa, first of four on this day. And then the number 19 a year ago, Charles Balsamo. That's one of his three. Dawson Riley answers back, gets top side and scores one of his two. But then Ryan Landolfi rips it from distance on the man up. And Shamanad wins. What a great moment there. You see Terenzi on the Manhasset side and Balsamo. Uh, that's what it's about, right? You do battle uh, for, what, 48 minutes, right? And then at the end, you, you join together uh, as a group because you realize it's, it's for a bigger cause. Absolutely. And these towns, and uh, these towns, these teams are so familiar with each other and the personnel between travel teams, the proximity of how close the schools are together. You know, I, I, I've gotten a, even got a selfie picture from the two goalies, Matty M and PJ Verdi, together hanging out. So they all know each other and makes it even more special. So off the timeout, Mikey Mondiello gets it back up top to Cardulo. Has that lone goal right now for the Indians. The Flyers' season ends today. Manhasset continues as they search for another state championship. <clears throat> and they seem to somehow be on a collision course with Mount Sinai as well. <laughs> we could talk about that as this game goes along. They've played in the last two Long Island Championships, split both of them. As a little bit of a two-man game, the handoff to Colin. Yeah, a little two-man game. Manhattan looks to be basically face guarding. Uh, Shamanah looks to be basically face guarding, shutting off everyone else. Colin the jumper, great kick save by Verdi. Solid save by Verdi going down, getting his foot on that ball. It's a tough save to make. 
And again, I have to point out, Shamanad's, we need more help defense there. They're just late to slide and giving, giving Manhattan some great opportunities. Yard sale as Connor lost the stick. And we go the other way. Look out at midfield. An aggressive battle. And it's Manhattan who comes away. Physical game, but so far the refs are letting them play and making the right calls. Just a lot of crowd noise making it more dramatic. Now look at this to the cage and the goal. Wave it off. A crease violation on Colin. Let's go the other way. The Flyers with numbers now. Low to low. Pat Flaherty. He doesn't need 26 to score. And it's 2-1 for Shamanad. Heads up play by Verdi there. Realized that, the, that the Manhattan was in the crease. He's set, waiting for the official to blow the whistle. He gets it, sends it the other way. And, uh, you know, fast, fast break for Shamanad, and they buried him back in the net. For Pat Flaherty, the Naval commit his 13th goal of the year, and Shamanad takes a 2-1 lead. I just want to replay that entire, like, minute. That was... Amazing. We have, we have so many guys going Division One. That's college-level lacrosse we're seeing out here today because of that. And it looks to be a flag as well as Connor is in the box. Yeah, tough to see what happened there. I'm not sure if it came from the Manhasset bench uh, or if it was a, a That's going to be locked in. So Colin is in. This was... Perhaps something behind the play. We're not, we're not sure, but. Yeah, it's a non-releasable. That's yeah. what they're calling. And it looks like they just pulled uh, what you would call on. And it's number 23, which is Colin Danny, which I believe might be what they call the in-home. So if there's a penalty on the Manhasset bench of one of the coaching staff, they call the in-home. Oh, Danny Colin. Sorry. Colin, yeah. Colin. And. So I think he might be designated as the in-home. So if one of the coaches gets flagged, they have to put someone in the box, and that's what it looks like is happening. Well, you can understand why coaches on either side would be complaining. There was a whole lot of stuff going on. I mean, they let him play. That is for sure. They were consistent. But if you're the coach of the team that just conceded the goal, you're not going to be happy. Man down, face off. And it will go to Shamanat. So right off the goal, you've got a man up that's locked in now. I believe it's for a minute. And now let's see what Shamanad can do here. Big momentum, big possession here for Shamanad, but they need to make sure the shot counts. Connor Cutton feeds it out to Landolfi, the big lefty. Really love the game of Cutton. A star in the making, perhaps a future 19 for this Chaminade team. And another flag is thrown. Firing high was Creo. M a good save. Still with Chaminade, though, and a little shuffle shot backhanded by Lau. Yeah, Creo got a great shot there. Uh, solid save by Maddie. That one was coming in hot and... Uh, you know, it looked like there was just a little interference in the crease. There was a, a check that looked like Aiden Lau's stick got knocked down by one of the defensemen. That's an interference call. It can't do it. Uh, so it's another penalty. Yeah, this will be 30 seconds against Mulholland. So now you're playing six on four lacrosse for the next 30 seconds. And you're without maybe your best pole as well. So big opportunity for the Flyers to extend their lead. Yeah, these are the opportunities Shamanad needs to capitalize on because late in the game, they come back to get you. So you got to have Manhasset rotating hard, fast, and you look to see if that crease opens up. Cut and spins, Landolfi low to low. That bounces wide. Jack Morrison, big knockdown. That's what you need. And, and when you're down two men, you need defense taking pieces of the ball to keep it off the cage. They've got one back now. Landolfi. And that wide again. Lando. Also the captain of the Chaminade hockey team. 
I like Manhasset's man down here. They're doing a good job of staying disciplined, but getting to the hands of the shooters. They're not t taking time, not getting stuck down low. They're getting out to the shooters to try and challenge those shots. Landa wants another look, and now we're even. Little wheel action, and a forced pass out to midfield. This becomes a ground ball, and already going over with Shamana there. That's Ryan Tintel, number 10 on the pole. Real discipline came out. Simple, just basic slap on the hands as the pass is coming. Gets that ball going the other way. And now a flag against Shamanad. So after the teams were kind of playing with reckless abandon and being allowed to, now more flags are flying. This would be another 30-second violation. It'll be Manhasset's second. Yeah, that's up, I should say. That's always the concern when you let them play early on. It's physical, momentum goes back and forth. Everything to me in the beginning was pretty legal where there were no calls, but you always then run the risk of it getting chippier and chippier, and then it sometimes can get a little crazy. And then you'll hear the, the little yipping from the sidelines. Be consistent, please. You let this go early. You know, so it's hard to, hard to wear those stripes, that is for sure. For sure, and coming in today, I, I you know, said hi to the official staff, and I know these guys, their experience is some of the best in the county, so I really do trust what, what they're going to call, and, and we're lucky to have the, the staff today. Look up top, step down shot right into Verdi's stick. Save number three, the 100th of the season for Verdi. Special save 100 for Verdi, and that's a good one. Disciplined, you know, you got to put a better one on it to get it past PJ like that. Again, another ground ball. And this picked up by Shamanad. Charles O'Connor, 31. Inside the final two minutes here at Gold Star Stadium. It's Shamanad with a 2-1 lead over Manhasset. It's the 14th annual Reeves Rock. A lacrosse day for heroes. Gary Correa, he'll stay local and play at Stony Brook. And now Landolfi comes out. So we are even. Seeing now that we're even, Manhasset, you know, started out packed in before, coming out, extend the field a little bit in their solid man defense. Downhill and into the goal, Gary Correa. And the Chaminade lead is now four to one. Excuse me, three to one. Great offense by Chaminade. Uh, you know, a simple carry across the top as the guys inside are doing their job, basically looking in, sealing off that slide man to try and delay, the, and you get a late slide there, shot from about seven yards. It's a high percentage shot that's going to count. Goal number 12 on the season for Gary. A punt return guy with a lacrosse stick. So fast, tough, not afraid to take it down the middle. He'll be on wings for a lot of face-offs. as Gerard wins that one cleanly. Can't say enough about Cal Gerard, but I probably can't say anything that hasn't already been said this season. And what he can do is really slow down a team's ability to take runs, and that's a big win for Manhasset when they need it. Was harassed, somehow it got loose. Off the pipe for Connor, and he was laid out. Ground ball picked up, though, by Haggerty. Now Peterson to Colin. What I love, too, about both of these, the kind of symmetries, you both have a really high-level sophomore on the attack line. And attacking the net was Jack Peterson, the senior bound for Harvard. Cuts the Indians' deficit to one. This was another one where it felt like they weren't totally settled yet, and then just a heads-up play to realize. You know, simple seal off right here, a little left to right, seals the defenseman off. Sees the slide, shoots it before the slide gets there and buries it. Silky smooth, quiet calmness is Peterson's game. That prototypical north-south Dodger. At a breakout end of the season last year was the MVP of the Long Island Championship a year ago. Yeah, you could describe him almost in that situation as kind of a slippery Dodger. He didn't even look like he was, he'd even got anywhere near full speed on that Dodge. He just kind of had the ball looked around, saw he had some space to operate, and just took the left to right, seal your defenseman, like I said, and that, that slide was had some distance to it, so he got the shot off in a place he was comfortable with. Quinn Ball on the left. 
this craft is in the family. When his brother James faces off at Yale. Yale back in the tournament again. A lot of games today pushed from behind by Lapina. So a face-off win again for Ball. Yeah, you could talk a lot about Cal Girard, but Qu Quinn Ball is obviously an excellent face-off man as well in his own right, and he's going to give you know Cal all he can handle today. Might be, I'm trying to think back to some of the bigger Manhasset games this year, might be his best challenge to date. Because Darianne really didn't have a guy, and Garden City doesn't have that guy this year. Look at this to the cage. And then landing in the crease was Riley. So we go the other way. 3.7 seconds left in this first quarter. Maybe a chance here for something late. Heads up, Verdi. That one bounces over his net. He was ready. But what an incredible opening 12 minutes. The goalies have showed out. Both teams playing with physicality playing the game the right way. And that includes number 19, a special number on this day. And Gavin Creo wears it proudly. 3-2, the lead for Chaminade. It is Riggs Rock right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York High school sports. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island. Varsity Media offers live sportscasts for any event. Our productions include announcers, multiple camera angles, graphics, instant replay, and so much more. Hankinson getting it back. Hankinson going in, dropping it back. The shot of the goal! That's it! That's it! Norton! Norton! Pittsburgh, the Class 8 champions! If you want to enhance your event or make the experience better for your viewers, reach out to Varsity Media today and learn more about our live sportscast. Contact Varsity Media at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Welcome back to Gold Star Stadium. Dylan Butler, John Geek, and our entire Varsity Media crew here for Riggs Rock presented by Catholic Health. And as we mentioned at the very top, Jimmy Regan's number was 19 here at Chaminade. And check out this list of 19s, John. You go back, Jack Ty, a whole host of these guys. Will Renz going to Yale. Sean Cutton, the older brother, another Yale guy. Kevin Pimental at Michigan. And then, of course, the super freshman down at Duke, Charles Balsamo. What a, a litany. These are the most recent 19s and some special ones there. Yeah, you're in good company with number 19, and if I'm a, a college coach, I want to look at <laughs> who's wearing 19 at Chaminade because, you know, obviously some talent and some character behind that jersey. And what a year Balsamo has had for Duke this year. Clearly playing nice with a bunch of his former rivals because there's a lot of St. Anthony's guys there. Best in class guys, and look at this, Fogo! He opened Riggs Rock a year ago with a Fogo. He opens the second quarter with a Fogo in the opening face-off of the second quarter. Well, that was brought to you by the Face-Off Academy. And you know the Beast is going to love that one. That is for sure. How can you not? And that's, uh, you know, that's what we talked about with Cal Girard. That's his ability of what he can do. And when you're a defense, you got to figure out who you're sliding to. And when he comes down the center cylinder there, do you slide to him and leave someone else open? Or do you let him come down and take a shot? Like Chaminade's defense did a little late slide there from 10 yards. It's a tough one to save. So six seconds into last year's Riggs Rocky scores, and it's nine seconds into this second quarter. And you know, the guys at the Faceoff Academy surely like what they see out of Gerard, not just in this game, but on this season. That one, though, he went early. So it's a face-off win for Chaminade. We're even right now in the eight face-offs. 
And that's an advantage, certainly, to Ball and the Flyers. Yeah, as we said, if you keep, you know, that, that face-off match at 50%, that's a, that's a win in my book for Chaminade, and it's going to put them in a great place to win the game. And he's another guy heading down to Duke as well, joining one of the better face-off guys, another St. Anthony's guy in Naso, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, an incredible almost embarrassment of riches for Donowski down at Duke. But I was trying to reference as Gerard went to the hole, the best-in-class guys, O'Neal and McAdory. And look at this, Creo, number 19, gets his second. Creo came to play today, and obviously in a game like this, that's what you want to see a number 19 doing. And uh, he's just taking it himself. You know, no slide here, Get, gets your defender a little caught up, hands free, takes a great shot. Beats Matty M, stick side high. Tough one, tough angle, and puts it in. Creo a year ago had 3-1 and one in this game. A 17-8 win for Chaminade. Same numbers that Balsamo had as well, as that's a face-off one by Gerard. And a quick shot opportunity. Yeah, I think you mentioned it's interesting. Last year as a sophomore, Matty M coming up, he was you know hoping just to be on the varsity, ends up starting for most of the season. This year he knows the, the other team's offenses, he knows who the shooters are, knows what they're going to do. And uh, after that goal, I'm watching him down the other end, and you could tell that he wants that one back. He feels he uh, could have made that save. And I think that's the big change. As a junior, you're seeing incredible confidence out of him. And that's uh, a difference maker for Manhasset this year. I think when you, when you look at his progression and his growth, I think it actually started at last year's Riggs Rock game where he was given the opportunity to start. And that's a tough situation for a sophomore as here comes Luca Petroselli downhill. Hands off and yeah, Manhasset lost that game, but that's a big opportunity for experience and he's made the most. Look at that spin and a great save by Verdi denying Connor in front. Huge save by Verdi. Can't say enough about the discipline. That's what you got to do as a goalie. Stay back, stay big, and make that save. And everyone's looking to Verdi now on that one. And Creo goes top shelf. His third of this first half. You got a Verdi save on one side, and then Creo goes where Mama hides the cookies. A great goal. And look at this. Time and space. He will not miss from there. Yeah, man has the defense left Creo out on an island by himself just hanging out, and he's going to make you pay if you do that. His 36th goal of the year. Now I think, and again, I could be mistaken here, but I think the way that the Catholic League is sort of set up is, there's only the two teams, right, in the AAA, obviously, with Chaminade and St. Anthony. So I think there's only one All-American spot to be won, and likely that will be Owen Duffy, deservedly, no doubt. But I think a, a guy like Creo misses out there. Another full goal goal. Verdi says no. Great. So number five on the game. Another, another solid save. Manhasset's getting opportunities, but they're not moving Verdi enough. He's being disciplined, staying back not biting on these fakes, and he's making the saves. And a game like this that means so much to the Manhasset community, we want to thank, as we have before, the Manhasset Lacrosse Parents Association. The MLPA wants to thank the Manhasset Lacrosse community for their continued support and generosity, which makes broadcasts like this possible. Also a great... Uh, to hear Frank uh, Coughlin's uh, voice on the PA here. And, and again, as we have done before at the Woodstick, wanted to send our condolences to Frank on the passing of his wife, Ellen. Uh, Frank runs the Manhasset PAL, and he just organizes and manages not just lacrosse, but all sports under the PAL umbrella. umbrella. In addition to being the PA announcer at the stadium, uh, his wife, Ellen, just before the Woods, the day before the Woodstick, uh, passed away at the age of 67. So again, our uh, deepest condolences to the Coglin family. But um, again, nice touch for this game, right? To have his voice, 
right? You hear him all the time at Ed Walsh Field, and uh, great to have him here at Gold Star Stadium as well. Yeah, it's a great touch, and he's a legend in the community. All the guys on the team know him, say hi to him when they see him, you know, around Manhasset. So I think it's really special to have him here today. Totally agree. So both teams taking one of their two timeouts in this first half, and Creo has been the man of the hour in this one. You got to think there's so much pressure on whoever's wearing that on the, on this day, right? Because all eyes are always on you. Some people who don't even watch a lacrosse game all year, maybe have never worn it. Maybe they're just uh, have served in the army. Maybe they're just here because their buddies are here. They want who's 19? What is he doing? And obviously Creo has showed out in a big way. Ground ball picked up by Manhasset. And that's Jack Morrison. Back to him, and him does the right thing. Goes the other way into space where Mulholland will cross that big block C at midfield. I couldn't agree with you more on, on that 19 point. You know, it's about the character, and the team has to be careful when they're picking because you need a guy that has that type of character to step up in a game like today. Lau had the turnover, or had the cause turnover midfield. Tried to go to Creo, who again was, an, was on an island, but that pass was a little bit high, and now this a successful clear for Manhasset with Jack Peterson doing so. Yeah, relentless ride by Chaminade there, fighting for every possession. Got to give them the attack credit there for chasing it down. This all part of a Super Saturday here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Already had... That neighborhood battle at noon with Farmingdale and Massapequa. And then right after this one, 4 o'clock, we go to Suffolk County East Islip and Shoreham Wading River. That should be a fun one as well. Mikey Mondiello harassed and pops it back out. The Dalers winning that game and doing so handily as well, beating the Chiefs 15-6. You may have heard of the hit makers in the 60s of Lennon and McCartney. Well, today it was Lennon and O'Keefe to lead the Dalers to their big win. Here's Connor. What a slip inside. Liam Connor. But did he step in? Oh, they're taking it back. No goal for Manhasset. What a move, but it's for naught. Now we have two goals waved off for Manhasset. And now a flag, a second flag. Let's see if we can clean up some of this laundry on the field. What a move, though, by Connor. Listen, he is so big, but he is so slippery. But ends up in the crease. And let's take a look here at the, is it a multiple or one infraction? Let's see. We got offside for a 30. Then we got a push. That's another 30. So we'll be six on four. The second time in this first half that Chaminade has been six on four. They've been yet to capitalize, though. This is their fifth. When you put them to put the two of them together, their fifth man up. And they are 0 for 4. Look at Keith Cromwell just giving it to the official. I and mean, we're way up here. They've got a much better vantage point. But I might be with Keith here on his argument. Yeah, I got to say, there, there's some questionable calls. I, I know the refs, you know, it's a tough game to keep it fair and even. But, you know, that, that last one, especially going, going off sides, I got to say, though, on, on the Manhasset side, that's a mental mistake you just can't make in this game. Aiden Lau goes low to high. That one wide. This is tough for the Manhasset D. You're six on four with some guys who could really sling it. That includes Creo, who shot, shot, shoots it wide. Yeah, good man down defense does the, the little things right here. And when you're six on four, the guy on the ball has got to get to the guy to the, the, the hands. But everyone else has to be rotating fast and get anticipate that next pass while being in the skip lanes. And Dolphy, and that's a huge save for him. Huge save for him, tough one, overthrew your guy a little bit there. Uh, great save on the off hip. It's, it's something that we've seen a, a little bit of trouble with him this year, so he gets there on the time and room, big save. 
You're you're the you're the goalie guy, and you know him well. Is that one where he's got to just hold it for a second and then make sure that he gets the guy? It, it's tough to say because you're still man down, so you want to get that ball out quick and see who's uh, you know who's open, who's available. Because really quick, they'll lock everybody on, and even you as a goalie will have the pressure. But yeah, half a second. Oh, him! Wow, that his best. Sorry to cut you off there, John, but your boy came up with some brilliance there. Can't be upset about you jumping in for that one. And this time he held it the right way. Huge save off high. You know, discipline staying back. I can't talk enough about what he did, did there. But Lapina loses it. Ball on the ground again. Smart decision. Let's go back to Verdi. He's chased down and hacked by Connor. Under duress. Still gets it upfield. And now Shamanad gets the pole clearance. And they've got numbers. Who do you got to play here? And finally, the Indians can settle it. And it looked like there that Benny Cacavo didn't want to get loot, get rid of the ball, right? He's like, coach, I made all this long distance running. Let me finish something here. But it's a timeout for Shamanad, their final of this first half. Let's take a look at some of those upcoming games for you on the Varsity Media Sports Network. We mentioned at 4 o'clock, John, I know you and I did the same thing. We listened. We didn't watch. We were driving, but we listened to uh, the first broadcast between Massapequa and Farmerdale. I think we'll both do the same here going home. East Islip, sure, I'm waiting over 4 o'clock, and then uh, I know you'll be on the call on Monday, Plain Edge and Cary, and then New Hyde Park in Long Beach as well. You see Cary there jumping in to our most recent rankings at number 16. So that should be a fun one on Monday. But uh, listen, next game up is a big one too. East Islip and Shoreham Wading River, two teams that also have state championship aspirations in different classifications, East Islip in the B and Shoreham Wading River, of course, in Class C. Yeah, three great games for Varsity Media today. Definitely taken, I'd say, probably some of those ratings away from ESPN and all their college games. See there, you want to hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Follow us on our social media handles on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And a reminder as well, John, hope you're hungry, my friends, because we've got another food review here at halftime. Tom Coluccio, Small Batch, smallbatchrestaurant.com. I think we got the, uh, the ravioli and some smash burger as well. Um, they brought it in here. It smells terrific. Uh, so stay tuned at halftime there for our food review. And I don't know, man, you must have a great agent because every game you're on, you've got the food review as well. Yeah, I can't, can't complain. I've been real lucky. Nice snacks at halftime and food to take home to my wife. <laughs> this was a crease violation against Chaminade. And, and again, the Flyers will... will again utilize that ride. I do have to give a compliment to the officials there. They made a couple different calls on the crease that I think are fair calls. And in these type of games, sometimes there's so much to watch, so much going on that you miss those. And they're really important because you get in that crease. It is an advantage. And uh, as a goalie, I've always seen th those calls get missed. So kudos to them making the little things uh, you know, important as well. So Manhasset looking to cut into their deficit here. That's Matt Cardulo. Such a balanced attack this year for Manhasset. Listen, of course, you never it's never easy to replace a legend like Joey Terenzi, who was the top rated midfielder in the country a year ago. But you do it with balance, and that's what Manhasset has thrived on this year. There's Luca Petroselli handing off. I, to I totally agree with you. When you're matching up a team like, like Manhasset, who do you slide early to? Who do you hold later for? And if you do, you know, you, you run the risk of giving a high opportunity out to the other team. First, let's give credit to Ben Fox on the one side for Chaminade with the takeaway. And how about the effort by Luca Petroselli on the other side? Getting it back, that's all heart and hustle, right? He's sprinting from behind to try to win, it ball, to win the ball back for his team. And he does right there. And now he's like, how do I get out of this? And Cromwell says, don't worry, buddy. 
will call a timeout for you just as he's pushed out of bounds with 4.32 left in this first half. Yeah, and sometimes I think people watching home might, might look at a coach like Coach Cromwell when he was just you know coming at the refs a little bit. And the, why do you do that? The play's already been done. But just right now, there's a little bit of debate between the officials. And you put that pressure and you feel like you're not getting the calls, that call can tend to swing the other way for you. Yeah, sometimes you argue for the next one. And uh, Cromwell's done it long enough. Not as long as Moran, but he has done it uh, long enough. Cromwell in his seventh season. Last year at Hofstra, we talked to the Indians. They were our last group to come over to our tent as part of that great pre- and post-game show at the Long Island Championships. Well, now the scene shifts to Stony Brook this year. And the Varsity Media Sports Network will again be on hand. All of your pre- and post-game coverage live from Laval Stadium all day long. There's four Long Island Championships to be played. We will be there for all of them. There you see, they're excited in the back winning that game against Mount Sinai last year, a year after losing to Mount Sinai when Joey Spolina rounded the cage, scored with just seconds left at East Islip High School, and then Van Hassett earned uh, their revenge last year, and then when they went on to win the state championship. And for Van Hassett, it became Lacrosse La Town USA because the girls also won. So you had the boys and girls. You had a great uh, parade as well in a very tradition-rich town of Manhasset. Uh, so that was great to see after Manhasset, the boys won their fifth state championship. Yeah, nothing but tradition out of Manhasset. They expect to win every year when they come out. And uh, with the teams, with the youth league feeding those high school teams, they're always in a good position to do it. Off the turnover, Cutton goes low. He had Creo on his left. But a good save by M. Another clearance, and it looks like will it be saved? It will be. Thought it might have been a failed clearance there. Turning, firing, and scoring. Matty Cargiulo, his second. And Manhasset has pulled within one. Yeah, that one starts, in my opinion, with Matty M down there. Big save from about seven yards, fires it out. Gets it down the field. You're going the other way. You got a little bit of, bit of momentum. Unsettled. Pull that string. Off stick high. It's a tough save to make. Switches hands to his left. Cargiulo, who has had a terrific senior season of athletics in the fall, was a great quarterback and linebacker of the Manhasset football team. And it feels like a while since we've had a face off. <laughs> Sorry. Right. I think this is only the first one since the start of the second quarter. And it's been so long that the ball jumped. Big make it, take it here for, for Manhasset with a chance to tie it. You know, Cardugal just did so much there, getting his hands free, shooting it. They're going to come right back in, and they're on the attack again. And as we said, so many different guys, right? You look at their front six of Connor with 31, Haggerty with 26, Colin with 20. Your first midfield, Peterson with 19, Cardiulo with 28, even Mondiello with 12 as well. So every one of those guys a threat. And that's Peterson getting harassed by Matt Marchetta. Yeah, that's textbook defense by Marchetta there, just sticking his hand in there, making him uncomfortable, don't let him get in the rhythm. Flag, you see it there. So Manhasset will go man up again for the third time this game. Free possession now is Mondiello. They work it behind the cage to Connor. Connor swims. Thought about it, pulled it back out. This is the advantage of having someone like Coach Cromwell on your sideline. Discipline offense, not just firing a free possession at the cage, but executing an offense and taking a shot. Petroselli hands off as well. There's the cutter, but it's in and out of the stick. Shamanad gets the ground ball, but as we mentioned, it'll be offside against Shamanad, a 30-second violation. So Manhasset will go back up a man their third time this afternoon, 0 for 2 with a man up. 
Yeah, head scratcher for Shamana for Manhasset there. It's just tough. You got that opportunity. It was open, and you just lose the ball there. But I do have to, you know, point out Shamanat's defense there did a good job, as we've talked about. Didn't create a second penalty opportunity while that offense was being run. On Wednesday, they went out to Cy Donnelly Field knowing they needed to win. The Flyers did as Connor is shot is off the mark because again they, what they did this year is uh, in a lot of previous seasons you played those three games so you have two regular seasons against St. Anthony's two regular season games against St. Anthony's and one championship game as well uh, but this year the the two coaches who are close friends as well Keith Weiserick at St. Anthony's and Jack Moran here at Chaminade said listen if either team goes 2-0 and in the regular season we'll just call it at that and that's what happened there, a 17-11 win for St. Anthony's. But it was one where Chaminade led early. They had their chances, but St. Anthony's just chipped away and ended up winning the Catholic championship. Yeah, tough one to, to see. You know, kind of sad to see that they're not going to play at Hofstra this year because it's just such a great rivalry game. But you understand it's a battle. It's tough to beat a team three times, so, so it makes sense. Cardula, last year's third game was incredible where St. Anthony's won that one. In overtime, look at the feet to the crease. Mack doesn't get a shot off. I'll tell you, defensively, Chaminade is playing. Their poles have been spectacular today. Now they could po possibly get him on the, in the sub game. Lau's got a step on his guy. Yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about at the, at the top of the game today, is that I think Chaminade's defense, they play well. That's a key to them winning today. And if they step up, and keep the shots outside where their goalie can save them, they're in the driver's seat. And there is Lau now. Pulls it back out. We're inside the final minute of this first half. It is Shamanai with a one goal lead over Manhasset. It's the 14th annual Riggs Rock, the lacrosse day for heroes. Low to low with that shot wide of the mark by Flaherty. He got his 26 back. Yeah, kind of interesting. Uh, you know, Aiden Lau, he's a gr great shooter. Been a little quiet today uh, on the offensive end. So I know the guys joke around that he has, his stick only works for, for goals and not for assists. But <laughs> uh, let's see what he does here. Lau tried another goal and makes the save. Tracking down that loose ball was Mulholland. That was Im's sixth save of this first half. Mulholland under all kinds of duress. No timeouts left for either. Can Manhasset get one more? Connor with two, with one, low to low, blocked in front. That one will not count, will it? They will count it. How about that? And it was Connor in front, the buzzer beater. I thought the time had run out. But watch it again. Yeah, shot initially deflected here, knocked down. Unlucky for Chaminade, but I, we said it. He's one of the players to watch. When Connor's in there mixing it up, fighting for it, you got to know where he is because he can make you pay in any situation. Perhaps fittingly, we are tied at five. Manhasset and Chaminade. It is Riggs Rock presented by Catholic Health. The small batch. Food review coming up here at halftime on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island. The Long Island Lacrosse Showcase has been the premier recruiting event in the nation for over a decade. Led by high school coaches in Nassau and Suffolk counties, our event annually draws the biggest and best college coaches. 
past participants and MVPs have been Joey Spelina, Mac O'Keefe, and Xavier Arline. Registration is now open for this must-attend summer event. Register now at lilacshowcase.com and follow us on Instagram at lilacshowcase. And coming this fall, for the first time, our Girls Showcase. Varsity Media offers live sportscasts for any event. Our productions include announcers, multiple camera angles, graphics, instant replay, and so much more. Hankinson getting it back. Hankinson going in, dropping it back. The shot of the goal! That's it! That's it! Norton! Norton! Pittsburgh, the Class 8 champions! If you want to enhance your events or make the experience better for your viewers, reach out to Varsity Media today and learn more about our live sportscasts. Contact Varsity Media at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Varsity Media offers live streaming, videography, and photography services for all teams and individuals of all ages. In business since 2010, we are the trusted source when it comes to sports media coverage. If you have a big game that needs to be filmed or live streamed, or an athlete in need of action photography, reach out today and save 15% when you mention this ad. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Are you a local business looking to advertise? Well, Varsity Media is the perfect place for you. We offer affordable rates both inside our live stream broadcast and through our social media channels. With coverage all over Long Island targeting the 16 to 54 demographic, why not take advantage and advertise today? For pricing and inventory availability, contact us today at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Welcome back to Gold Star Stadium. Here it's halftime of Riggs Rock. And the score is 5-5 five to five as Manhasset and Chaminade are all tied. We welcome you inside our booth for everyone's favorite here. Even heard some of the lacrosse guys downstairs asking about it. This is small batch. Uh, this, is, this place is incredible, folks. Small batch. It's by Tom Calicchio, the head judge of Bravo's Top, top Chef. They serve rustic American favorites. They're located in Roosevelt Field Mall. Everyone knows where that is, of course. Open seven days a week. For lunch, dinner, and weekend brunch, what I like most about this place, uh, other than, of course, their incredible food, is that it, this is about local sourcing. It's Long Island ingredients. It's everything here, right? It's not coming from trucks out of state. Everything is uh, local here. And, of course, their reservations are on open table. It's smallbatchrestaurant.com. And today we have uh, the Smash Burger, as well as one of the spring pastas. So the Smash Burger, I've got it over here. Uh, it's cheddar charred red onion, bread and butter, pickles, and smoked aioli. John here has the ricotta ravioli made in-house. It includes sweet pea, shiitake mushrooms, and parmesan. Are you ready, my friend? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right, let's go. Again, mic up. All right, first of all, Tom, make sure you get a big burger. All right, we're not messing around with small, tiny burgers around here. Actually, check it out here. All right, we're not messing around. That thing's a beast. All right? Um, I love the aioli. All right, it brings that kind of different flavor. Um, the char, that's a, that's a great kind of difference there as well because you, don't, you normally just get maybe onions that are fried or... or uh, raw but charred, make you know, it brings a little bit of difference there, and cheddar just makes it better. Absolutely. How about how about here? This the, the ravioli. I mean, what you said at the beginning, it kind of took the words out of my mouth. The freshness, all the the locally sourced ingredients, and that is sure the truth. Just absolutely fresh. I'm sure it seems like it's handmade in house, and that's it's just in, incredibly fresh quality ingredients in there. Just a great blend. I uh, love it. Small batch never disappoints. Whatever the dish you get there. Um, you know you're getting high-quality, local sourced. Again, Small Batch by Tom Calicchio. Rustic American favorite. Smallbatchrestaurant.com. Tell them Dylan and John sent you. Well, maybe you get a, I don't know, 
extra set of fries, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe some extra fries. We got those, too. Don't quote me on it. Let's feed the boys <laughs> as well. It's halftime here at Chaminade. 5-5 five, five is your score. No, 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 no. Halftime stats when we return right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island. The Long Island Lacrosse Showcase has been the premier recruiting event in the nation for over a decade. Led by high school coaches in Nassau and Suffolk counties, our event annually draws the biggest and best college coaches. Past participants and MVPs have been Joey Spelina, Mac O'Keefe, and Xavier Arline. Registration is now open for this must-attend summer event. Register now at lilacshowcase.com and follow us on Instagram at lilacshowcase. And coming this fall, for the first time, our girls showcase. Varsity Media offers live sportscasts for any event. Our productions include announcers, multiple camera angles, graphics, instant replay, and so much more. Hankinson getting it back. Hankinson going in, dropping it back. The shot of the goal! That's it! That's it! Norton! Norton! Pittsburgh, the Class 8 champions! If you want to enhance your events or make the experience better for your viewers, reach out to Varsity Media today and learn more about our live sportscast. Contact Varsity Media at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Varsity Media offers live streaming, videography, and photography services for all teams and individuals of all ages. In business since 2010, we are the trusted source when it comes to sports media coverage. If you have a big game that needs to be filmed or live streamed, or an athlete in need of action photography, reach out today and save 15% when you mention this ad. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Are you a local business looking to advertise? Well, Varsity Media is the perfect place for you. We offer affordable rates both inside our live stream broadcast and through our social media channels. With coverage all over Long Island targeting the 16 to 54 demographic, why not take advantage and advertise today? For pricing and inventory availability, contact us today at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. We welcome you back to Gold Star Stadium. Dylan Butler, John Geegan, and the entire Varsity Media crew with you as the second half about to start. We are tied at five between Chaminade and Manhasset in today's Riggs Rock Showcase, sponsored by Catholic Health as well as the Faceoff Academy, where for over a decade they've trained the best faceoff men of all ages, from youth players learning the basics to college All-Americans and professional All-Stars. Come train with former New York Lizard Greg Gerenlian. Major League Lacrosse's all-time face-off wins leader and USA gold medalist every Thursday in Deer Park. Check out thefaceoffacademy.com to take your game to the highest level. John, let's take a look at some first-half stats for you <clears throat> as well. I want to again thank the folks at Small Bash. Tremendous stuff. You see the shots. Nobody's shying away there here today. It's Shamana with a 19-14 edge. Saves were even at six. Face-offs. Slight edge to Gerard, 7 out of 11. Neither team able to capitalize on the man up. And ground balls, there's been a lot of them, and Chaminade's got the edge. Yeah, there's been some ground ball wars, and I, I got to say, I think we're seeing some great high school uh, defense here on both sides. No man up conversions, and, and Chaminade's defense has stepped up today, and that was one of the things I was concerned about, to see how they were going to bounce back after St. Anthony's, and they are stepping up in a big way. And uh, just some solid goaltending on both sides. And uh, I don't want to be accused of rooting for either goalie or being biased, so I love to see the <laughs> even level of, uh, of saves as well. Yeah. 
And I think we're going to have... I think they're going to have a word, I think, at halftime, right? Was that I? That might be what it is. I, I remember at the beginning of the game, they couldn't get the, the PA to work, so they said they were going to try to do it at half. Such a great time of the year. This is a sport that starts when it's really cold. <laughs> and it, when you are playing, when it's warm and summer-like conditions, you know that you're at the best time of the season. And it's coinciding with, of course, the NCAA tournament as well. Games today, all day today, all day tomorrow as well. And what I love, too, about the NCAA tournament, it's, it's you know, you follow these guys and their journeys, and now you see them at that next level, right? And they're all competing there. And then you know what? When the college season's over, they're all in the PLL as well. So that tells you about the – if you weren't sure, it tells you about the lacrosse certainly on Long Island. Yeah, that's what makes it so special. And you get to see them, and as good as some of these guys are at high school, once they get to college where everyone is at their level too, you see them get even better. And it's just so impressive to see them grow and mature as, uh, you know, the, these student athletes. I will certainly be watching Cal Girard at Duke going forward. I've got ESPN+. Plus. I feel like everybody does at this point, especially if you're a lacrosse fan. Yeah, if you're a lacrosse fan, you can't not have ESPN+. Plus. Tons of games on today and, and tomorrow, just like on uh, Varsity Media. So if you want to tune in and see the best lacrosse, and that, that's what's great for all the young lacrosse players today. When I was growing up, you'd only see you know the semifinals and the finals on, on TV, and now there's so much good lacrosse. And it, I always say the sport's special because anyone can be a good lacrosse player that wants to put that time in to work on the craft. And a big part of it is studying film, watching the best players do what they do, and try and mimic them. Absolutely packed here this afternoon at Gold Star Stadium. It looks from our vantage point to be standing room only. You've got student sections on both far ends of this stand, of these stands here. As Cargiulo tries to make a move, cut off there. We'll go to, what a move inside and a save by Verdi. Another crease violation, but somehow got a piece of that shot by Cargiulo. Yeah, Manhasa got a great opportunity playing a little two-man game there. No slide there to the shorty, but Verdi was there. Big save, and they even got bailed out with the crease violation. And there's Landolfi. Now let's make sure we get our proper personnel on, which Shamana does there. And that's Correa. He's got a goal in the first half. And again, this is the final game of the year for Chaminade. As if this game needed any added incentive. And oh, by the way, Manhasset is undefeated on the season. So there's that too. <laughs> yeah, plenty to play for and try and ruin the perfect season of Manhasset. And no better way. It's a championship atmosphere, as you said. Standing room only, packed house. Great way to end the season. What a clear from M to Flood. And Flood, look out from behind. Peterson ducked out of that. And now he's got a route to the cage. Peterson still with it. Smart play. Didn't force it despite the constant wax put on there. You saw by 44, Brendan O'Brien. Yeah, you see, you know, people say, how does a public school get ranks amongst these great private school teams? And that's the discipline and the IQ that's taught at the youth level in Manhasset. That's why their team is here. And you just saw that, what they constantly do. They've gotten a lot of opportunities today off these kind of settled, unsettled situations. But in that time, it wasn't there. Pull it out and run your offense. You know what else helps them in terms of national rankings is, is they play as good a non-league schedule as any public school can play. Look at this, losing the lid. Yeah, that's a foul. Shot by Colin. And now Manhasset will go back up a man. But the Indians this year, they renewed that battle of the sound rivalry with Darianne, which is always great. They played at Ridgefield. They played up, as you hear, as you see the violation. 
Stick up and under, lifting the lid up. So going in will be Correa. And I don't, I don't want to, you know, sound like a broken record, but another great save by, by Verdi in there. And, you know, it looks like uh, Chaminade there was sliding off the wing. You call a hammer slide down. Uh, normally, traditionally, the defense is what you call a coma slide, come across the crease. But there was no slide there. And even though there's a penalty, that goal would have counted if Verdi didn't get down to it. So the man up offense handing off there was Pat Arnold. Brother Edward plays at UPenn. Neither team able to capitalize as of yet with the man up. But back to that non-league schedule, you have Ridgefield there as well from Connecticut. They went down to Rutgers. They played Rumson Fairhaven. And honestly, the Woodstick as well is technically a non-leaguer because Garden City is a Class B as we're even now. Yeah, big testament to what both defenses are doing today with no converted man up opportunity so far. And that'll be a push from behind on Ben Fox. <clears throat> he had done so, many, so much right there <laughs> to cause the ball to hit the carpet. But that late push maintains this possession as Liam Connor gets on his bike. He's the one who beat the halftime whistle. Yeah, tough as a defenseman when you're, tr you're hacking, you're going at it, pushing, getting physical, trying to get the ball out. When it pops out, to try and control yourself and not commit a foul there. Especially, too, when some of those crafty attackmen just somehow pump the brakes at the most inopportune moment if you're a guy with a long pole. That happens at times. Yeah, they don't, they don't uh, shy away from when they feel pressure on their back falling forward either, I'll tell you that. Here's Haggerty, another flag. Bouncer in the goal! And Matt Cargiulo gives Manhasset the 6-5 lead. This is a heads-up play by Aiden Haggard here. Just well-executed offense. And as he dodges from behind, you know, he's staring into the Chaminade defense, waiting for that slide because he beats the initial. Slide, there it is. Hit him, make him rotation. High bouncer by Cardrulo. Great shot, great placement. And I love the different look, right? We're not going right at Verdi. We're not trying to go low to high, right? Bouncer there as well. And that's an and one as well. That was a one-minute slash on that penalty. So Manhasset, not only do they take the lead, now they've got a man down face-off here as if Gerard needs any extra help here. But the Indians have a chance here to even add on to their lead. Yeah, and I would say that both goalies so far, you see, they haven't gotten beaten the same way over and over again. You know, Verdi's been tough to beat, uh, and so they change up the level. I think it's the first real bouncer we've seen today, and it was a great one. Right under that crossbar from in tight, it's so tough as a goalie to get your hands out to get a piece of that. Cardulo's third of this game. That's three of six. Matty Cardulo has come to play. Big one here for Ball. Just kind of hiked back to Lapina. So here we go, a one minute penalty. Lapina comes out and coming out of the box, Donald Mack. We've seen the senior, the lefty, getting a run in this man up team. Yeah, and we, we talked about at the beginning, one of the keys is, is Manhasset's balance and if their offense comes to play and really gets off and going, like we're seeing them start to, start to get going here, they become dangerous. You've got so many different guys involved, and it's a challenge for Shamanad to key in on any one player. Before they locked Connor, and you got Cardrul now doing damage. you got Peterson getting involved. There's a lot of different threats that can hurt you. Peterson, look at this one, another bouncer low, and Cardiulo cannot be stopped. His fourth and the first man up goal. And Manhasset leads it 7-5. Great man up ball movement out there. All you're trying to do is get the defense to rotate and get them stuck in between there. And that's exactly what happens. You know, Manhasset's pulling, moving back and forth, back and forth. Chaminade defenders caught in between. Time and room shot from about seven yards. That's what you want on a man up. You saw Peterson with the fake right. Cuts it back left to the hot hand for Cardulo. Back-to-back -back goals for Manhasset here. And another face-off win. This one goes to the pole. 
as Mulholland got the ground ball. So now some momentum going to the set. Peterson though, stripped from behind. Credit Matt Marchetta. We go the other way, Tully. Yeah, great heads up play. You know, Shamana now, they're clearly their coaching staff pointed out, you can't fall asleep as they're subbing for Manhasset because they're gonna look for the opportunities. They pushed it a little bit there and jumped them and got the ball back. Lefty rip by Lando. Ryan Landolfi has pulled Shamana to within one. Heads up play, I like the, the quick execution and jumping into an offense. They move the ball real fast, spin it around the horn where Manhattan's still a little tight because it's kind of a transition situation you're getting out of. And there you have a nice opportunity there, off stick high, finished it well. Lando is a power lefty. Big body, big kid. Best step down shooter on this team and you can see why their 21st goal of the season for as we mentioned, one of many going down to play for Joe Amplo down at Navy. Yeah, talk about the step down, Lando there. What I loved about what he did was, there's, you could change your levels, that's one way to really challenge a goalie. But what he actually did there, he came from such a high release point that he almost shot it over him into the net, just under the crossbar. Oh, stepping out, trying to tiptoe the sideline, but not able to was Liam Connor. So now Connor will go to Hunt with Peterson. Nice pump fake on the attempted clear by Ronan Lauman. Had some shouts from the stands about an offside, but no flag was thrown. Yeah, I think the fans were calling for the offsides, but the, the substitution was the onside player and the ref was even waving off the fans. <laughs> <laughs> Flaherty, what a look to the crease and the finish by Lau. And we are tied at seven. I like what Chaminade's starting to do. They're, they're not slowing down and waiting for all the pl players to get on the field here. They're executing quick offense, not letting Manhasset sit back and get rocked into it. So they move the ball around. They're not waiting to attack. Go right away, draw, dump, and there's Lau inside. And that's what I said before, it's interesting because the first half he was kind of quiet and Aiden does such a great job in tight shooting that ball. He's really tough to stop in tight. Lau will join Flaherty who had the assist and Lando as well in that, I don't know, maybe a minivan you might need or an Escalade to get the boys down to Navy. Seven all here at Gold Star Stadium, five minutes left. In this third quarter, Gerard, another faceoff win. And in a spot that was not even, but certainly because it was close, advantage Chaminade, Gerard starting to win them in the third quarter. Yeah, and that's what the best players do. You step up when your team needs you. Colin! He gets the clear and he gets the goal. The sophomores, 21st of the season, and Manhasset leads at 8-7. Yeah, this is a, a situation where I always talk about defensively. You, you, you can bend, but you can't break. And Shamana played probably the best defense I've seen them play all year in these first few quarters. And right here, you know, they're letting up a couple questionable goals where all you have right now is he's running right down the heart of your defense. No one slides to him, give him a free clear. Uh, free and clear shot to take. Anyone's going to take it, and it's tough to make a save. Colin right down Jericho Turnpike. His 21st, as we said, a guy who brings the energy. Was up on the fresh on the varsity a year ago as a freshman, and Gerard spins and wins to Lapina. And now Mondiello steps in and back out as Manhasset gets their personnel on. Yeah, momentum definitely feeling like a little swing Manhasset's way right now. And for Shamanada, I don't think it's bad to have lost this faceoff because they need a good defensive possession, get back to their game plan, and start executing that quality man-to-man -man defense that we've seen them doing all day. And there is Colin just giving his team the lead. 
He'll take the short stick, who is Lauman, an army commit with a whole bunch of other guys at X. And there's Connor. Chaminade's been playing a little bit with shutting off Connor today, not shutting him off, getting him, throwing a couple different looks at him. So there's a little two man behind there, looked like to free him up a little bit, get the ball in his hands. Connor had a few different cutters. Kicks it back out. Low shot wide by Haggerty. Good ball movement by Shamanad, by Manhasset, but Shamanad right there doing what you need to do. They got out to the hands, challenging the shooters, and you're missing the cage. Peterson hacked by Fox. Now here's Connor. Backing down as defender. Connor. Slide came. Take it, take, they take it away. And now you go pole to pole on the clear. Here come the Flyers with numbers. We saw their 11, Ben Cacavo, getting up the field. I like the take by Connor there. I think it's a solid dodge. He had the opportunity, saw the slide was coming off the wing, so he tucked his stick, but he just couldn't quite get the shot off there. Credit to Chaminade's man defense. Got it, kept that stick on his hands and didn't let the shot get off. Correa. And this is a little bit what we sp spoke about before, right? Correa, who's on him? Lapina. This now lets you do other things with your poles if you're Manhasset. There's Riley, the Amherst commit. And that's a difference maker. When you have short stick D middies at the high school level that truly take pride in that position, and it's tough because their name's not always in the paper. They're kind of the unsung heroes. But when they do that, you let your team do a lot of different things. Flaherty, the skip pass. Ball back in front. Second chance for Riley. Both of those looks from the senior. Chaminade's moving the ball as fast as they've done all season right now. And that because of that, the opportunities are there. Manhasset needs to get out to their hands and extend that field. They're playing a little packed in right now. Flaherty spins it to his left. Now low to high. Shot by Lau. Another opportunity to tie this game for Chaminade. This is the man who opened the scoring, Creo. He's got three on the day for Chaminade. Low to low. I think Im got a piece. Might have been the pipe. We'll give it to him, though. The rebound, though, popped all the way out to midfield, so Chaminade continues on this possession. Yeah, that one had some heat on it. Looked like it hit him, then hit the pipe, then kicked all the way out past the restraining box. Flaherty forced it to Creo, and after all that work, then you just give it away. Yeah, it's got to be frustrating there for the Chaminade sideline because they got so many great opportunities. They are spinning that ball fast, as good as a college team, and unfortunately couldn't put one in the back of the cage. The clear for Lapina. And again, one of the great things about a game like this is this not just brings out the Chaminade and the Manhasset communities. We've got Garden City guys here watching the game. They, they wanted to know what the food review was at halftime. Yeah, they can't be left out. You know, it's, it's a great, you know, North Shore type rivalry game. Everyone wants to be here, be part of it. it. It's a great game to come watch on Saturday. And I bet you probably some St. Anthony's guys in the house too, right? And with so many club connections between a lot of these players. We'll show you a cool thing here in the fourth quarter of guys from both of these te teams when they were younger on the same Manhasset team. That's going to be really fun. But inside the final 30 seconds now, it looks like Manhasset will hold for one with the lead, and it's Luca Petroselli. Waiting for Luca. it's Correa. Luca hands off, skip, a little bit high to Peterson. 11 seconds, Peterson directing traffic to Haggerty. Gets it right back, Peterson gets on his horse. Peterson, side netting. Verdi, the quick clearance. He looks to play catch with him there, and that ends this third quarter. So advantage third quarter to the visitors from Manhasset, who have come back to take a lead, 8-7, to seven, partially because Colin got on his horse and got to the cage. He's just a sophomore. Plenty more Reeves Rock games for him. Fourth quarter coming up here. Chaminade, Manhasset on the Varsity Media Sports Network.
Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming schedules and content and on social media at Varsity Media. Are you a local business looking to advertise? Well, Varsity Media is the perfect place for you. We offer affordable rates both inside our live stream broadcast and through our social media channels. With coverage all over Long Island targeting the 16 to 54 demographic, why not take advantage and advertise today? For pricing and inventory availability, contact us today at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming schedules and content and on social media at Varsity Media. And we welcome you back to Gold Star Stadium. Three quarters in the books. And it's Manhasset with an 8-7 lead. Dylan Butler, John Geegan, our entire Varsity Media crew here with you at Gold Star Stadium. One goal game between Manhasset and Chaminade, and John, we could bring you some stats now through three quarters. We'll see how they change a little bit, perhaps advantage Manhasset here. See the shots, 25-21, saves one more for M in this one. There's the change, right, at the faceoff X. You see Gerard got into a rhythm in the third, and ground balls have come back a little bit to Manhasset's way as well. Yeah, definitely, uh, you know, making the impact being felt at the face felt at the faceoff X for Manhasset here and that's why he's so dangerous and, and can do so much in a game like this. The opening faceoff of this fourth quarter brought to you by the Faceoff Academy. You can check out the faceoffacademy.com to take your game to the highest level. And if you're unsure of why they call him the beast, just go to YouTube. Right, you could see how jacked up Greg Gorenlian was and is, and uh, the impact he had just revolutionizing this this craft. Yeah, you see him whenever you know, we talk about full goals, face-off goals, and he was the king of them. When he come down, the celebrations, something out of the movie 300, <laughs> he let out the screams. <laughs> you wish for him and, and, and what he did that he was able to be in the PLL of, of what it is now, right? Like, you know, you, you were there too, and, and it was kind of earlier days of the pro game with the Lizards and, 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 and the MLL, but obviously the game has just been elevated with the Rabel brothers and what they've done with the PLL, and, you know, now you've got others doing the face-off thing in the PLL, and... Yeah, he's a great brand of lacrosse, man. You, you can't say enough about what's happened there with the PLL and, you know, the, moving that pro game to the next level, getting it the recognition they need. They need. And guys like Greg Renly, and he was near the later part of his career, he stayed on because he's, you know, uh, a personality in lacrosse and really joined to make sure the PLL got what it needed. Look at Connor. Wide open after the turnover in midfield. And he extends Manhasset's lead to 9-7. Yeah, tough one for Chaminade there. Verdi made a great save staying back. Failed clear. Manhasset's all over the ground ball there, bringing it back. And last thing you want to see is Connor completely with no def defenseman anywhere with 10 yards around him, and he's going to bury it. I have to say, really impressed with, with the goaltending we're seeing today. You know, both these guys I, I've known for a long time, they do an amazing job of working hard. And, and, and the goaltending position is one of those things where anyone can be a good goalie, in my opinion. You don't have to have height like in basketball or something like that. You can be a good goalie, but it's working on their craft. And both these guys, Verdi and him, there's no secret to why they're in the nets for these great teams. They are both insanely good, hard workers. And, Matty M, you know, Verdi, Verdi, because of that, he's going to Hopkins. And Matty M, you know, a little under-recruited, hasn't made a commitment yet. 
And uh, but you know, Manhattan's got a lot of recent goalies that have made a, a lot of great plays for their team. And there's a small lineage of excellent Manhattan goalies between Johnny Young and Grant Petraka, who ended up at Notre Dame, and just recently Colin Kester, who Matty uh, came and replaced. And he had two great years over at Skidmore. So he's followed a great lineage of goalies in Manhattan. It's a great tradition. And, uh, you know, Coach Fallon there, their goaltending coach, is just one of the best, and he really keeps those guys dialed in and, and making the adjustments they need to do without, throughout the season. And then you talk the other side, and what a factory of goalies to come out of Chaminade, man. I mean, they just – it feels like there's been a – just a – from Chaminade to Notre Dame, like it, 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 this, this uh, a whole bunch. Obviously, most recently, Liam Entman doing his thing for the Fighting Irish – as there is Connor chased down by Tully, feeds it in front. And the ball taken away, right back to Verdi. Verdi's the latest Division I goalie out of Chaminade. Yeah, Liam Entman having an amazing year at Notre Dame and uh, really coming into his own, the, the, the first team All American this year. You know, going back to the faceoff conversation, I, I was struggling for his name and I had to just double check and look him back up. But you know, you know who kind of not. I think in, in the entertainer sort of thing like, like Greg was when he played, um, one of my favorites out there is, is Connor Farrell, right? I mean, like they call him the milkman, right? He, he has the gallon of milk with him. Uh, I had the chance to cover him when he was at St. East, was a linebacker, I mean a stud linebacker in addition uh, to playing lacrosse. But that guy has the hardest handshake. I thought when he shook my hand as a junior in high school, he was going to break my hands. And listen, those strong hands are being utilized to win a lot of face-offs in the PLL. Yeah, he definitely picked up the torch for the personality of the year for face-off, man, once uh, <laughs> Greg retired. So we mentioned before just sort of how cool. This is a great picture. We want to share this here from Sean Haggerty. Um, check this out. So this is a, a Manhasset team. But look at all the different guys here, right? Look at, look at Gerard and Riley and Haggerty. But then also you got Landolfi. Right, Carjulo, Peterson. These are from both teams as well. Other teams as well. Uh, part of this group. There you see it. Theo Torres, the former LSM, or the, the uh, sorry, the LSM uh, for Cold Spring Harbor. Uh, so many different guys. Diskin on the other side. Right. Uh, how cool is that to, to bring a picture like that where Sean's got to dig in a little bit and find it, but uh, it shows you this. You know, there's guys that look like that right now in the stands, and that'll be them uh, in a few years. Yeah, really cool to see that. And and Haggerty there, the, the Haggerty family has done a lot for Manhasset lacrosse over the years. And I'm remiss to, to not mention Haggerty as a solid Manhasset goalie as well in the recent years and went on, on to Villanova. So uh, great family there. So it's so cool when you go back, you know, now with, uh, with all the technology you have to access one of these old photos and see where these guys have come. Packed house, as we mentioned before here at Gold Star Stadium. And they have been treated to a fantastic lacrosse game. Manhasset leads Chaminade 9-7. A year ago, it was Chaminade winning at Ed Walsh Field. That one was 17-8. Wasn't nearly as close as this one is. Chaminade, they want to end their season on a high note. Get to that 10-win number. Feel good after that loss to St. Anthony's. And Manhasset, not only are they on that revenge tour we showed you earlier, but they want to remain undefeated as well and keep this train rolling towards the postseason in Nassau Class C. So here we go. Cargillo. The hot hand here today for Manhasset. Four goals on the game. You have two from Liam Connor, one from Colin, one from Peterson, and one from Gerard. I think the Chaminade fans have a, a gripe there calling for a ward. Wasn't given. Doesn't matter. The Chaminade defense comes up, but now it's a ground ball war. It goes behind the cage where Verdi comes up with it. Look out. Verdi harassed by Connor. Ooh, and a big hit. And this will stay with Manhasset on the interference call. Big hit, 
Uh, it's a big play for Chaminade. I think they got a little lucky it wasn't called for a high one there, but, you know, Manhasset ball. And Chaminade, as we were talking about. Chaminade playing good defense when you need it. Now a route to the cage, low shot. Just wide, and it was a crease violation against Cargiulo. That might be the fifth crease violation we've seen here. Like the crease up here, probably different on the field, but up here it's hard to see it. Obviously these guys know where it is, but. So now Chaminade looks to clear. It will not be easy. Because Manhasset, they will ride hard. And here comes Creo. Creo wisely went to attack the short stick. Continues on his run and works it to X. Got to give credit there to, to Brian Knapp, number 24, taking it over. He was getting absolutely heckled over that line and wasn't even sprinting, just taking his time, not giving up the ball, get that possession to his offense. Drew Lynch pushed down and another penalty against Manhasset. So Shamanad 0 for 5 on the man up. They'll have one more at least in this one. Here you see it again. Got a little hook under the arm there and then the push. Aggressive defense by Manhasset, but that's the right call by the referee. A little high push with possession. You're going to get that call every time. It's a big opportunity here for Shamanad. Seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. This is a big, big possession for Chaminade. Got to put one in the back of the cage here. Landolfi up top to Creo. Swing it back to X, a two-man game there. Cutting, hands back to Riley. Feeding the crease off the pipe. Loose ball. Lando the physicality, does he keep the possession? He does. Great job by Landolfi. He wants to start fast. Great Shamana ball movement there. Aiden Loud just missed that one off the cage there, it looked like. And he doesn't miss those often, I'll tell you that. Here's Creo, and we're even. Back to Landolfi. Landolfi gets downhill, goes far post and wide. Seeing late in the game. Great discipline defense by Manhasset, making Shaunot fight to earn every opportunity they get. And that's why this game is so close right now. Cutting against Lapina. Back up top. Showed you before his brother, his older brother, wore the 19 for Shaunot. Cutting to his left, to X, to Riley. Bit of a hush now here at Gold Star. That's how much as riding on each possession at this point. Yeah, this many people being this quiet at, these, at this point of the game is pretty crazy. And, you know, what I'm seeing is, you know, Manhasset has done some zone over the year, but they like their man-to-man, -man, and you could see why. They have every fill, every slide guy ready to go and help their team. But Lau finds a way. Aiden Lau goes top shelf for his second of this game, and Chaminade pulls within one. Yeah, I, I feel that Aiden Lau was kind of a missing piece in that first half. To get, They need to get him going, get him the ball, get him some touches, because he's lethal when he shoots in these situations. Just a little, he's got a little cushion, that's all he needs to shoot, buries it, off stick high on that near side pipe. That's a tough save to make, excellent shot by Lau. Aiden Lau, we've said it earlier in this season, he is back, had ACL surgery end of his sophomore year, had that bulky brace and just wasn't himself a year ago. Um, but he is back and making a big impact. And look at this, a clean win for Ball. And Ball to the cage, kick save by him. Great save by him, that's a momentum one. That's where you need a disciplined goalie to come up. Wide open, Correa off the substitution game. They couldn't find him. I think there were a thousand Chaminade fans who saw 21 cutting and Unable to get it. He does get it now. Yeah, there was so much noise on that one being open. <laughs> you know, sometimes being on the field when that happens, you don't even know what to look at. You're not sure if you're seeing the right thing because there's so much noise, so much screaming. Like, where exactly it should have been moving this ball? 
Correa, low shot, just wide by Riley. Shamanot again, well coached on the offensive end. They're squeezing the field, squeezing the field and attacking after every, off every pass. Manhattan's got to get some more pressure out on that, those offensive hands. Correa off the screen. Switches hands, back to X. Correa lowers the shoulder, cuts inside and pumps it back out to Jude Lynch. And now Creo. He wants a clear out here. It's mano a mano against Flood. Now the help comes. Ducks under. What a go by Creo! Gavin Creo. We are tied at nine. What a play by Creo, number 19, repping that jersey today. And Manhattan, what they do, I actually really like this. You have an invert, they actually zone it. We haven't seen a lot of teams do that this year. They have zone, the slide's there, it's ready, but he just slips over, over the, the original cover there, and that's why Creo has that opportunity one-on-one -on -one and buries it. And still there at the cage, the little fake as well, just to make sure he gets goal number four on this day. And we are tied at nine. Under five minutes to go. And Gerard gets the win. Creo's just having a day. And like you just said, he has an opportunity and he makes sure that it counts. He doesn't just get nervous, get it out of his stick quick, makes the fake, moves him, and buries it. Now a hush again as Colin is behind the cage. Back up top as... Jack Tully hears the applause for his work with the short stick. Yeah, number 34 there, Marchetta, the LSM. He did what Shamana has struggled a couple times in this season to do. He came down off that wing and didn't allow that topside dodge to come off and get a shot. Great heads up play, knowing where you need to be. Luca Petroselli hands off to Peterson. Peterson with one and two on the day, switches hands. Now they reverse things, Petroselli quickly. Good defensive work by Tully. Taking it away from Haggerty. Now Haggerty takes him to X. Gets going, slide comes, Haggerty ducks under it, kicks it up top a little bit too much. A terrific save at midfield, man. Jack Morrison. How many times do we see a guy go over and back in those situations? Credit to Benjamin Fox there, number 30, on that slide. Came, got the lift, and gave his team an opportunity. Unfortunately, didn't fall his way. Here's Peterson. Slips, maintains possession, and Manhasset wants to talk things over here with 2.47 left in the fourth. Number 34, Matthew Marchetta there, just harassing, harassing the ball carrier, making it real tough to get anything done forcing Manhasset to use a timeout so there was no transition the other way. We'll show you our upcoming schedule here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. This is game number two of three of what is a Super Saturday. Farmingdale beat Ma Massapequa earlier today. And then the nightcap, if you want to call it that, I guess. But uh, East Islip and Sherm Wading River we will do battle out in Suffolk County. John and I on our respective rides to our homes will be having it on our phones. We're not watching, we're driving, so we don't want any Nassau cops to think something different there. Playing edge and carry on Monday and then New Hyde Park Long Beach round out the regular season and then it is postseason lacrosse on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Of course, you wanna hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel and also uh, follow us on our social media handles at Varsity Media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook to find out where we will be in the postseason. These two teams prominently featured, as we mentioned, nationally, but also, of course, on the Varsity Media Sweet 16 poll entering week eight. You see Manhasset just behind St. Anthony's, right in front of Chaminade, a rare undefeated team at this point of the season. Mount Sinai, another one, and again, we mentioned that collision course, perhaps, right? Connectquat, top seed in Suffolk Class A. They've had a fantastic season, have the T-Birds, and the Dalers, it feels like they're kind of rounding in the form right now. We had that great Blue Port, Blue Point, uh, Blue Port, Bayport, Blue Point game. I'll get it right. Against West Islip. 
and they are right in the mix, both of them for state titles. Uh, and you see Garden City there, a dangerous number nine. You know, they just kind of find a way, right? They they always seem like, at least recently, you know, a little bit of hiccups midfield, enough, or midseason, enough for people like, eh, they're not going to do anything this year. You know, this isn't their year. It's a down year. And the next thing you see at Hofstra or at Stony Brook, or, you know, excuse me, at Hofstra for a state championship, they're lifting up the trophy. Yeah, Garden City always finds a way. I think it's also the testament not just to what incredible youth program they have there, but also they have athletes. You know, I know their, their football program is always well known on Long Island. A lot of those guys play lacrosse too. So they're athletes, they're gonna make some plays, they're gonna get themselves into a position to be competitive, especially by the end of the year. And you know, you start thinking about all Americans at this point of the year, and you gotta figure Stevie Fennell will be right there. And you might even get two out of Garden City. You know, you, you know Cal Girard is gonna be that guy as well. He's only one of two returning All-Americans on the island, the other being Tyler McCarthy out of Kanekwat, who will play up at the Dome for Syracuse. Here's Connor getting topside, sidearm shot wide, but the backup was there by Cardulo. Yeah, I like the play there by Shaman. Kind of a slow slide, and, and Connor shoots the ball, and he actually had number 23, Danny Collin, a little bit open there, but he didn't see him because of the Shamanad slide that stood in that passing lane. Inside of two minutes, spinning away was Cardulo. Look at this, ground ball, and it's picked up by Shamanad. Ben Cacavo came away. And now the clear by O'Brien, and Shamanad calls. Timeout with 1.43 left in the fourth quarter. Great defense there by Cocavo and O'Brien. They see Connors cutting, going ball side. He's, there's a big play at this point of the game. They absolutely jump him there, and you'll see it on the replay. But they jump him, get the ball back, and we're going the other way. And this is not an easy clear either by the pole, but you see the athleticism there as well by O'Brien. The junior bound for Lafayette. Lanky kid, and his coach says, you know, listen, he probably weighs about 180. But next year, he'll weigh about 200 and be a beast. Good stick as well. And, and he's that third guy in, you know, a senior-laden group as well. Or at least, I mean, Fox is a junior. But Cacavo is a senior going to BU. And O'Brien, the junior going to Lafayette. Yeah, 180 going to 200 over the summer. That's, I know where he's going to be spending his time. They have a great weight, uh, weight room right here at Gold Star Stadium. Exactly what my point was going to be, yeah. That's where he'll be spending most of his summer, I'm sure. And then you get that Brazilian barbecue place up, so you get the, bro, the protein up there, hit the weights. Both can live. 200, <laughs> 200 in no time. A year ago, those Flyers were 12 and 5. Their signature win was in this game. A 17-8 win over Manhasset. Suffered three losses to St. Anthony's a year ago, 19-10. 13-12, and then at Schuert Stadium on the campus of Hofstra University, a 10-9 overtime loss. And this year it's 9-4. And 1.43 left in the game here. As a goalie, neither goalie really wants it on their side of the field. You just want your offense, keep it down there, keep it away from me. Uh, so just a tough situation no matter where you are and just hoping you come out on top. On April 13th, up at Darien, Jack Moran picked up his 600th career win. And that is incredible rarefied air in the sport of lacrosse. Amazingly, Jeff Braymeyer, his opposing coach on the day, uh, he's ahead of them on that all-time list. And look at this! Creo! Wearing the 19 with pride. His fourth of the game, and Shamanad leads it 10-9. Yeah, Creo came to play today. This is just straight, great shooter. Sometimes a great shooter takes a great shot, and that's exactly what we see here. He takes the ball, gets to a place that he's comfortable shooting, sits back, again, little cushion, that's all, all he needs, buries it right under the crossbar. Tough save for him to make. But as we're seeing here, you know, having someone like Cal Girard at the faceoff X, minute 22 left, that's who you want taking this faceoff. And apologies to Gavin, goal number five. Wasn't trying to take it away from him. Five on the day, half 
of his team's goals on the day. A huge faceoff, and ball comes away. And Moran calls his final timeout, and the boys on the sideline, they are juiced. You've got a goal and then the faceoff win. Those are juice moments. Possibly the biggest faceoff win of William Ball's high school career right there. Coming back, getting in there, getting that ball back to his team. There's no shot clock. We've got a minute 15 left to play. Quinn Ball, you see him there. He was the first freshman to ever play on this varsity team. They had to get a special, like I think, committee going. They had to make sure that he was allowed. And Jack Moran said, listen, it's a specialized position. Uh, we've got injuries there. And listen, again, all right, brother James, face-off guy at Yale. Great, great family. He's solid as a rock, 5'10". And now he's had that year of experience. He played all summer long. Chris Clark, who played for Shamana, now he's a Nassau PD guy. He comes in three days a week to coach up Ball as well. And uh, what a massive face-off for Quinn Ball. And now the pressure's on Manhasset. And what do you do here? if you're Shamanat? It's tough to say. I, I'd say, you know, if they force anything, give you opportunities, you gotta take the shot. You can't just sit back. You gotta expect Manhattan to come out and either have him out of the goal, shutting somebody off, doubling the ball, whatever the situation is. You have to react to it. And this tight of a game, if the net is open and you have, you ha if you're gonna take that shot, it's gotta go in. You can't take that opportunity, miss the cage, or give someone like him or one of the, defense, one of the three jacks a chance to scoop that ground ball and go the other way. And you see a little bit of a strategic move here. M out of the cage, goes onto the other side of midfield, which allows now Manhasset to have an extra player there. Yeah, Coach Timmy McEntee, who's my, Hofstra, my my coach in Manhattan over at Hofstra, he called this one freedom. Get the goalie, send him to the midfield line, get an extra position player over there to defend. So now instead, we often see the goalie coming out, right, and acting as an extra defender. Now you have another defender, and that's Peterson to do so. Here's Tully. The short stick D midi. No timeouts left. He loses it. 53 seconds. Neither team has a timeout. So we are going to go. Lapina gets the clear. It's a big gamble to make that play, put your goalie over the midfield line, but that is exactly as executed. You tell your team, keep the ball below the goal so that there's no easy opportunity and a shot at the net and double it. Go after it, do everything you can to get that ball back. Well executed by Manhasset. Here's Jack Peterson. 26 seconds left. He gives it to Colin. Cargiulo has been the hot hand today, number 21. Colin goes to X with 15. Colin up top. Spinning is Peterson. Beats his man. The slide comes. Peterson ducks under. They've got to get a shot here. Three seconds. Peterson switches hands, the lefty shot by Peterson into the stick of Verdi and Chaminade wins Riggs Rock 10 to nine. Yeah, Chaminade all over them, giving them no opportunities, nothing easy here. They almost didn't even get a shot off because of how great Shamana was all over the ball. And they're extended on the adjacents here. So they're fighting, 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 finally get a shot off. And that's why you have a goalie going to Hopkins in the net. Big save, holds the win on for the team. And for Verdi, that was, even though there was a lot on the line there, might have been his easiest save right to his stick. A tremendous save for Verdi, and it is Shamana winning this 14th annual Riggs Rock game, 10 to nine. What a game, what a moment. And now we'll send it down to the field for the post-game presentation. And I think actually that'll happen right now. 
Jimmy was killed. 15 of it, we started Lead the Way with a lot of good family and friends in Manhattan, Chaminade, and around. We've invested over $10 million into our Rangers and their families. And we couldn't do it without you. So thank you. But the reality is, we're in a cold war right now, and it's tough. These guys have been through 20 plus years of the global war on terrorism. So through our Ranger Resiliency programs, we're keeping them strong, we're keeping their families strong, and we need, still need your help. So with that said, thank you very much for helping lead the way fund. And what a day we've had. Thank you. <laughs> Gentlemen, Manhattan, come up here. Hold the game, boys. Can I have the ca captains out front? Thank you, Brother Tom. It's awesome to see you all. It's been a tough day. But the great thing about this, you're all friends. You know each other really well. Hard sell. Any team could have this game. So I'd like the two, the, the captains from Chaminade, step up. And what a day it was. Thank you, Lord, for this. And God bless. Congratulations, Jim. Take care of that trophy. Brother Tom, I want to thank you and the Flocker staff for all your love and your, and your commitment to us. It's tremendous. Thank you. <laughs> Coaches, thank you. Thank you for getting these guys prepared and for the love you put into the teams. Manhattan Coaches, same there. Pete, up game, man. No matter what. Very much. You guys are welcome. We had a wonderful day. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you next year. It died on me. Thank you very much for being here. So Mr. Regan addressing the crowd here. And this is what this game is about. <clears throat> After battling for 48 minutes and nearly more, uh, these two teams side by side for a team picture with Riggs Rock right in the middle. Yeah, it's as good as a game as you could want. Both teams doing a, a lot of different of the intangibles that are really tough and executing their game plans. I have to give credit to the Chaminade defense. They had a huge bounce back game after St. Anthony's. You don't know how a team can respond like that. And for Manhasset, it's a tough loss near the end of the season, but they have bigger fish to fry as they move on to the season. And it's always dangerous to not know what losing feels like as you go into the postseason. So hopefully, you know, I know Crom Coach Cromwell, his staff are one of the best. They're gonna rip this game apart, look at where they can do better, and make sure it doesn't happen again as they go into the postseason. I'm gonna say right now, if Manhasset goes and wins another state championship, they'll look at this moment as one that helped them get there. There is no doubt about it. Because as you mentioned, right, it's easier to get into the laboratory and try to fix corrections after a loss than it is after a win. Wins mask a lot of things. 
but a loss that's right there to see for these guys. So, yeah, they're going to be sore. A loss, an undefeated season, the possibility of one, you lose that, it stings. But I think those guys will be better for this game as they move forward now into the public school playoffs. Yeah, they played an amazing game against one of the best teams in the country. Came up a little short, but if they want to go ahead and get off Long Island, as we talk about, as tough as it is, there's a good chance they're going to be facing one of these other great teams like a Mount Sinai that's another one of those best teams in the country that you need to win these tight ones. And those guys right there, what a moment to end their season, right, where um, it was a different type of season, right, for both Shaman and St. Anthony's. You had to find a lot of games. You didn't play, I mean, 14 games really doesn't feel like a long season, does it at all? But um, that's the reality of being on an elite level like Shaman and St. Anthony's are. And then, again, you have the disappointment out in South Huntington of losing and seeing your arch rival win the championship for another year. But now you bounce back off that and you get a big Riggs Rock win. Uh, another one for Chaminade. And again, fittingly, right, where Gavin Creo uh, has an incredible day, five of his team's goals, including the winner. Yeah, I can't say enough about what Chaminade did. It, it is so tough as a team, as good as you are, to lose the way they did against St. Anthony's. Come back and you got to bounce back. You can't feel sorry for yourself. you got to go back to work and come out and play another great team. They did that, all the credit to the coaching staff and their game plan, because they executed today and, and really came out on top because of that. I see it here, these are the final moments of the 14th annual Riggs Rock game. Ball into the stick, Verdi throws it to the air, and it's time to celebrate with the boys. Yeah, I'm so happy for, for P.J. Verdi there. He Last year, Riggs Rock got an opportunity as he was kind of split in time, came out of the game with a little bit of a hand injury, and we, we talked about kind of, uh, you know, that revenge tour, and P.J. Had, had something to prove today, especially after St. Anthony's, and I think he definitely did that. The Manhasset revenge tour falls one stop short. But what a day it's been here in Mineola, New York. Tremendous afternoon of lacrosse, and it's, the 14th annual Riggs Rock. I want to thank our entire Varsity Media crew. On this day, it's executive producer Ben Turchin, our technical director Chris Sweeney, Ron Pierre, and Angelo Caezo bringing you all those moving in images. For my broadcast partner John Geeg and Dylan Butler, thanking you so much for joining us. And we'll see you next time on the Varsity Media Sports Network.